Welcome to Rabbit Trails Part 2, How to Dream Big and Make It Happen. Um, In last week's episode, for some reason, I wasn't able to uh, (laughs) add the intro and outro. My mic was having issues. So, ta-da! Here it is in Part 2. I am speaking with Noel Joy, a good friend of mine, a good virtual uh, cross-state friend of mine. Uh, We met through a work convention, an ag convention, and um, I was like, man, I'd like you to be on my podcast because Noelle is very accomplished. At least I definitely and many others consider to be accomplished. She is just um, killing it, getting her PhD. She's killing it at the research um, Georgia Herb Research Center that she works at and runs. Uh, She is killing it in marketing and creating Christmas markets and all sorts of incredible things. And months ago, I saw on her Instagram story um, that she was breaking down how to accomplish her goals and how to reach them. I thought that is so cool that she's sharing that with people. And I called her up and was like, hey, do you want to come on the show and help people learn how to uh, map out? their goals, get a vision for what it is that they truly want, have realistic expectations, um, and and start making that march towards uh, bringing their concepts into reality. And in part one, we kind of got a lot of rabbit trails, but in part two, we do get to the topic of of interest, which is uh, how to attain and reach and work towards your goals. I recorded this episode back in December, uh, to clarify, December 2020, Um, and it's kind of funny to hear this after my smartphone episode, so if you haven't listened to it, you should give a listen to Should I Dump My Smartphone episode. Um, It's honestly kind of funny hearing some of the things that I talked about and dealt with in this episode that um, thankfully I've been able to uh, rid myself of or, or move past, but it's always super cool to um, listen to old conversations and rehash it out and reflect. And oh my gosh, this is an intro for an episode. Why am I talking about this? Okay, here it is. Enjoy. It would be interesting to have like a, a diagram of this conversation. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we are going to bring it all back full circle. But, you know. Yeah, it will come back. Oh, ooh, ooh, I have one other thing I want to mention. Um, yeah. Also, before I mention that thing I want to mention, my chair is really <laughs> old and squeaky and I got it at Goodwill. And it's just like, I feel like I really need to invest in a quieter chair because when I'm editing, I always hear like, (laughs) I'm like, and I'm very fidgety. So I'm like always making it, making all this squeaky noise. But anyways, um, something I want to touch on as well. This is way back. I couldn't even say when this was, but you mentioned something about having grace with yourself and, and balance and celebrating and you even were saying like let's celebrate the title of your book idea you know which may or may not ever happen depending on what storyline I actually decide to go with but my point is that's something I'm definitely trying to work on with myself is Mm. like I feel like when I launched my podcast I kind of was hoping for more I guess from some of the people in my life like I've been working on this for months and editing and calling people and cold calling and you know figuring out new softwares and, and all sorts of stuff, you know, getting adapters and blah, 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 making graphic designs for the art. And I even record on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm recording clips of nature and then I'm playing that in the background while we talk. So just all sorts of little touches, you know? And of course, in part, I think a lot of people, what's my dog? I think of course, in part, a lot of people don't understand how much work I put into it because I haven't really talked about it a ton. I just kind of put my nose down and just work so a of course when I finally launched it they didn't they didn't know how much went into it but then she's staring out a two-story window looking into the darkness I don't know what the heck she thinks she's barking at right now (laughs) but um, (laughs) anyways um but then too you know I, I realized from this you can't you have to kind of walk into certain things without any expectations and you have to understand at the end of the day, like you, you have to celebrate your own accomplishments, you know? And I realized I hadn't really given myself the chance. So a, from the level of, you know, you shouldn't expect that kind of validation from an outside source. If you get it great, if not, then that's okay. You know, you can experience that within yourself, but then also beyond that, 
just taking the time to, um, taking the time to congratulate yourself when you're putting in a ton of work on something. Mm-hmm. And cause my, my mindset was like, okay, it's finally launched. It's up. Good. Now let me keep editing. Let me keep calling people. Right. <laughs> now I have three podcasts scheduled this week. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Like, let's go. But then I stopped and I was like, are you going to celebrate? Are you going to do anything at yeah. all? Like I haven't even stopped to say, wow, I finally did it. Like it's up. Yeah. It's, it's in reality. It's here, you know? So I like, it wasn't that big. I just took myself out for a drive and bought some uh, sour cream and onion cheddar ruffles chips and a right. Reese cup. And I just drove down the country roads and like, just looked at the scenery. I went to the park and, but just something little, you know, like just, yeah. Hey, I did this gosh darn it. And I'm going to celebrate, take a moment to stop and congratulate myself and reward myself with, for all the work that I've done. I think that's so important. And, and like having people that you trust to celebrate with you also. Mm, yeah. That, and I mean, I'm still working on that for sure. You know, I, part of, I mean, part, part of that is like what I share on Instagram. It, it's really helpful for me to like acknowledge and, you know, say like, Hey, I did this thing. And, and feeling before I felt like I couldn't say that because I couldn't like, congratulate myself too much, you know, but I think it can be really powerful to acknowledge yourself and be like, I worked really hard to put that into the world and I care a lot. It's not, yeah. it's not like an ego thing. It's a, yeah. it's like, yeah, that part, that part of you that deserves to be seen and recognized for how hard it's been working. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not great at it, you know, like we did this <laughs> holiday market and then on Tuesday, we did it last week. And then Tuesday I was like, all right, we're going to plan out the next two years, you know? And it's like, okay, I probably could have just been like, what if we just chilled out this morning? <laughs> yeah. Like pizza's on me. Donuts on me. I don't right, know. Right. Like <laughs> right. we're going to just sit here and just talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, so I am still learning how to do that, but I think it's really important because that that's very nourishing um, mm. to to, to be acknowledged, you know? Yeah. And again, like you said, that word balance, oh gosh, that word is so hard for me sometimes. Like it really is. Like, I feel like I don't, I, I have to really kind of work and be mindful of like being somewhere in the middle. Cause I'm either go, 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 go. Or I'm like laying in bed, eating an entire pizza, watching Netflix. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna lie. That's me. Like, you know, like I just, I, I can get like that sometimes, or it can be hard for me to like do stuff sometimes, you know? And like, um, what are they going to say? I swear I was really about to say something that made sense. <laughs> Hold on. What were we just talking about? Pizza. Oh, balance. Yeah. So balance. I'm actually, um, I'm, doing this devotional right now called Holy Hustle and it's on the Bible app and I'm not going to get, you know, too with it, but it just talks about balance between working really, really hard and like not doing anything at all. And it was really nice to read because it resonated with me, what the author was saying. Um, She mentioned something along the lines of, I find myself either going, 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 or I try to give myself a break and have a season of rest or a day of rest. And then it just turned into just a lot of wasted time and longer than I intended it for it to be. And then I just, I get in this season of doing nothing. And Mm. I've watched a lot of, I've listened to talks on this and videos and it's kind of in a weird way, comforting to read other people talk about that and say, Oh my gosh, I'm the same way. Like I'll be super, 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 super productive. And then I'll, I'll just not, you know, I'll just get so out of it because you burn yourself out almost. So it's almost like, finding that balance, knowing when to congratulate yourself for the things that you've done and saying, Hey, let me just pause. Like that was a really awesome Christmas market that I just did. You know, this is me talking as you, (laughs) but that was like a really (laughs) awesome Christmas market I just did or, you know, hot dang. Like I have been really good at cutting back my processed sugar and Mm -hmm. I'm boxing a lot and I need to let myself have a pat on the back or, you know, And then also maybe when you're finding those seasons of rest or those ways to rest, maybe more um, beneficial ways of resting. And that looks different for a lot of different people. And that's, again, what this 
this uh, Bible devotional I'm reading was talking about, but um, that could be maybe, maybe instead of me just zonking out to Netflix, it could be, hey, let me set the hammock up at the park and just take a nap or read, or let me take my dog for a walk down by the river, or like I just recently painted a bunch of my pumpkins because I wanted to turn them into the Christmas decorations. So let me just oh, put nice. on some, yeah. So let me just play some really nice instrumental Christmas music and paint my pumpkins, you know? So yeah. just, just well, stuff like that. I, you know, it's interesting listening to you talking and all of these things. Like I, even like being outside, I would time myself, you know, like I'm going to lay out in the sun, but I'm going to time myself so I can like get enough vitamin D. Like everything was like about <laughs> being productive, even in like my rest time. And mm-hmm. I guess like what I, what kind of came to me when you were talking is like, what if we, what if it was okay to have periods of productivity and then periods of nothing? Like, what if it was okay to eat a box of pizza and watch Netflix? Yeah. Like we're assigning value judgments to doing quote unquote nothing and saying like, I need to have my rest be productive Mm -hmm. by painting pumpkins or going on a walk or being outside or something like that. And, you know, I, something else that I've kind of been like deconstructing this year is this idea of the binary where it's like, it's either right or wrong. Like there's a Mm -hmm. right way to rest and a wrong way to rest or a right way to be productive and a wrong way to be productive. Like you have to do it so you can be productive, not get burnt out so you can stay productive. But it's like, you know, it's like, (laughs) it's it's crazy things. And it's like, what if we just like allowed ourselves to be? And what if yeah, extended period of doing quote unquote, nothing was exactly what we needed in that moment and not like judging ourselves for that. And I don't know, I, I'm not there yet, but this idea is like percolating in my head and it's kind of a vision of what I'd like to get to, which is like, I think what we all would like is to be able to just be, you know? And I remember in herb school, my teacher talked about traditional Chinese medicine and it's this idea of yin and yang Mm -hmm. and the yang is like the rising energy, you know, kind of the productivity part. And then the yin is like kind of going internal or kind of hunkering down and resting. And the, when it gets out of balance, you know, we aren't able to seamlessly flow between the two. And that's what we want to be able to do and not like, go, 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 and then crash. But it's like being able to exist in both, in both places and being able to transition between them gracefully. And anyway, I, that like visual really resonated with me. And I don't know, I think maybe what would it be like if we gave ourselves permission to eat a box of pizza and watch movies all day and yeah, not assign value judgments to it and say that like, we're doing something bad or wrong, but being how, I don't know, like if we give ourselves permission, then I think maybe we, we could be, what am I trying to say? Not that it's like, I wonder if we would make different choices if we just let ourselves do whatever we want to do. And, right. Like know? if it, if there wasn't that you can't have this mentality because then you want what you can't have kind of thing. Yeah. I think it's interesting too. Cause it's like, I think it can be really individually based. Like how you were saying when you watched movies all day and then you felt horrible. And so you're, (laughs) you're more the type to make a lot of your rest and relaxation time very productive. Right. And then I'm more (laughs) of the type to where a lot of times my rest and relaxation isn't productive. So Mm -hmm. it's like also knowing like when to kind of mix it up. Like maybe you Mm -hmm. should just let yourself be okay with, you know, watching Netflix and like getting some really good ice cream and like some blankets and like cuddling up, you know, but Mm -hmm. that's kind of my specialty. So maybe I should be okay with like, (laughs) with like going outside of my box and saying, okay, like this is good to a point. Now, what can I do to to shake it up for, to like kind of help me out? You know what I mean? Like maybe I do this too much when I'm relaxing. So that's all I kind of meant earlier was like, cause I, I will say like, I feel much better. I feel much more like this weight kind of lifted when instead of just always doing my go-to I say hey I'm gonna play some lo-fi music and I'm gonna journal or I'm gonna like let my brain do something relaxing but also you know what I mean so it's just kind of like also knowing how to mix it up and and when to mix it up and like you said just kind of feeling that out in a sense yeah that makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense and it's good like you said it's good to try new things for sure yeah Um, 
yeah. yeah it's fun it's so fun because yeah. i think so so many of us do get kind of caught up in that like netflix rut but it's like when you peer outside you know like you climb up that little <laughs> ladder and like you like lift the storm drain or whatever you like look you're like whoa and there's like flowers and like bees flying around and you're just like oh my <laughs> gosh it's beautiful <laughs> that's very true that's very true yeah it- a different perspective for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess we should probably get into some goal, uh, <laughs> some goal talk. I'll say we will get to it. Um, yeah. Um, I do you have any specific questions or are you want me to just like kind of talk about like what I talked about in my stories? That'd be great. But first I'm going to grab a rice cake. Hold on. Perfect. I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> This, this podcast is going so well, and it's definitely much longer than most of my podcasts, so I'm just going to get a quick intermission snack. <laughs> it's chocolate. Ooh. It's my a favorite dessert, one. A dessert rice cake. I love rice cakes. It's like some nut butter or something. So good. What'd you say? Oh, I said I love rice cakes, like with some nut butter or something. So good. Ooh, yeah. I'm not on this kick currently, but for a hot minute there, I was like, all right, I got my rice cake. I got my peanut butter on top of my rice cake. Mm -hmm. And then I have a little bit of honey on that bad boy. And then I have a banana sliced up. And then I have pumpkin spice on top of that. (laughs) It was so beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds legit. That sounds awesome. It's so legit. But I'm going to be like muting and unmuting myself while you talk just so it's not like ASMR over here with the crunching of me eating directly in the mic with my (laughs) rice cake. I mean, some people love that. (laughs) My ratings might go up. Oh, right. <laughs> um, but I will say you asked me what direction should we take this? Um, yeah, timeline or your your story or whatever okay. it's called. I forget the name for what it's called. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess the orig- or the first thing I want to say in thinking about me, the process that I go through to kind of envision and then create the groundwork for working towards a big goal. And, and actually the first step goes along with what I was sharing earlier, which is writing out a vision that is as big as you could think of it. Um, Because for me, and, and partly, you know, like I said earlier, it might just be my personality. I like to kind of like envision things. And I also like the details of it too, you know, like planning it out and, and looking at all the different aspects of it, looking at it from all the different angles. So that's, I mean, I do find that an enjoyable process, so it might not be for everybody, but it's been hugely impactful for me to be able to write down big goals because it gives me kind of the long vision of like what I'm working towards and Um, and I'm kind of like, you know, if it doesn't scare me, then it's not, I don't know. I I want to always be like growing and learning new things and tackling big things and in my own way, making a difference in the world. And so anyway, for me, the first step of a goal is to, is to look and see like, what am I working towards? And then how can I do the things now that are going to help me get there? And a big thing, it's interesting because you were talking about celebrating and me kind of like clapping for your book title idea. A big part of it for me is like telling someone else. And I remember the first time that I shared a really big goal with somebody. I actually met up with a friend at Jeju. It was like this spa in Atlanta and I loved it. We're like, we're going to have our business meeting at the spa. (laughs) And so we both shared with each other, our, our biggest dreams. And I, I want to mention this because it happens to me and I don't know if this happens to other people, but I, after I verbalized what my big dream was, I kind of felt terrible. <laughs> I was like, Oh my gosh, like who, who am I to think that I can do that? Like the audacity, you know? And I think we're so used to like, keeping ourselves in boxes about Mm. what our capacity is and what we're capable of. And, and anyway, dreaming the big dream and then telling somebody else and kind of getting used to this idea of like verbalizing it, getting out of my head onto paper out into the world. It was a huge 
it's a huge part of the process for me and something that's really helpful and helps make it more tangible. Um, and I follow this woman named Brene Brown and she talks about this idea of like having a vulnerability hangover where, and I actually, I share this a lot with friends because sometimes when I'm like really vulnerable, I'll feel this way of like, Oh, I shouldn't have said anything. And I maybe feel more insecure or again, same. Kind of like, <laughs> so I had to interject there. Same. <laughs> Right. And so I want to bring it up here and I like to share it with people because that doesn't mean you're on the wrong track. If you, if you dream something big or have a big goal and share it with somebody, even if they're really supportive and especially if they're not supportive, um, it's really normal to feel bad. And I hate that that's the process, but like, to me, I guess I just want to normalize that if that's your experience, that doesn't mean that, that your dream is not right. Um, Right. It might mean that it requires something of you. It requires growth and it requires change, but it's totally possible. And like, I believe really strongly, like we wouldn't have the dream if we didn't have what we need to realize it and Mm. bring it to reality in the world. And so, because, because each of us with our unique life experience and unique personality, unique gifts, unique challenges like we all have something unique that we can bring into the world and so if we dream it up like of course you know we're capable of doing that it just might require a lot of us (laughs) right so anyway for me that's kind of the first step is thinking through that and now it's kind of just like a process where actually over the holiday break I'm going to be redoing this usually about once a year I try to go through the process of like looking at all the different areas of my life and coming up with the vision because it constantly expands. And then as I achieve things, I'm like, wow, my vision of what's possible continues to expand. So I like to do that as a regular practice. That's Um, good. Kind of like refreshing it and reevaluating it. Yeah. And, and, and for me, like some people, and again, this is totally dependent on someone's support system if they don't feel like they have a good support system like I'm not saying go out and tell everybody and have people shit on your ideas you know like that's not what I'm saying but if you have supportive people in your life you know in my experience verbalizing it has been really powerful because then other people in your life are like hey how can I help you make this a reality too and then it you know like you garden everything at you garden is because of what I've verbalized and then now like this whole community is helping like for this kind of vision that we're all going to benefit from, you know? Um, so anyway, that's kind of step one, which is a lot of emotional work and a lot of like internal work, which is dreaming something big and then kind of like having a glimmer of an idea of like, Hey, I can do that. And like building that confidence. Um, and so then from there, I like to try to break it down and to say, and, and in a way that, I mean, I'm really bad at this, but the goal is like in a way that honors my capacity because it's so easy to, again, overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in five years. And so I try to break it down and say like, okay, if this is what I'm working towards, what does that mean in the short term? And, you know, try to create um, smaller goals. And so I think like in my Instagram story, one of them, one of my goals was um, streamlining the systems or business side of things at you garden. And so identifying what my goals were in the short term to kind of move towards this long term, which is like me kind of working myself out of a job at you garden and, or getting it to a point where someone else could take over. Um, and, and then, I, you know, I probably should have like looked back at my stories and seen like how, oh, I it, fine. But, <laughs> but then, um, a big part of the process for me is, is two sided. One is like, what are my internal blocks that might get in the way of it? And so one of the things for you garden, I remember writing this down is like feeling like I needed to be in charge of everything because I didn't want to give it up kind of like an ego thing. Like mm, if I, give, I feel that right. Like if I delegate, people aren't going to do it as well as I could. And then I'm not needed. Or I don't know. It was this. Or like thing. maybe even one might be as daring to say, 
then they get the the clout for it or they get right. the recognition for that. Dude, I had the same issue at first with my job, but I realized delegation is so beautiful. Now I love delegation. I'm like, look, take all the credit. I don't care if it was my idea. Just do it. <laughs> right. right. And, and like when we're constantly or when we revisit that visioning state, it also expands like it because there's more ideas and like big ideas and stuff like that it's like we don't need to clutch on to every single idea that we have it's like we can let go of it a little bit and realize that yeah that I don't know does that make sense like yeah no definitely and you let Um, things be fluid and you know maybe you put an idea out there and you know, you like your idea, but the group likes it, but they actually kind of want to tweak it, you know, and you're kind of like, that's not how I would tweak it. That's not how I would tweak it. But then you're like, you know what? I release you, (laughs) (laughs) you know? Yeah. And I've like found that when I've been able to do that, like it used to be really challenging for me and it's getting easier of if someone else is inspired by it or wants to run with it, they're going to do a better job than I could, or at least different. And then it, it brings a new perspective, you know? So Yeah. So for me, it's like working on keeping an open hand and being able to let go of some stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a big part of my process for kind of achieving goals. It's just kind of the internal work of like not holding everything with such like a tight hand. Yeah. Um, And, and then also looking at practical limitations and it might be, this one's a big one for me, but it might be a lack of knowledge that is keeping Mm. me from being able to achieve a goal. And so it's not necessarily that I need to pay for a book or pay for something, but it might be like finding a podcast or finding a YouTube channel or looking at articles online or um, like one thing was I reached out to the entrepreneurship department at UGA to see if I could work with um, one of the folks there to help me brainstorm business ideas and how we can like improve the business side of things at you garden. And they gave me some like that worked out and they gave me some awesome ideas. And so I think sometimes it can feel hard to accomplish a goal because there are very practical limitations or logistical challenges, or even just, we don't know how to do it. And so being proactive and patient with building the skills required to achieve our goal. And I don't know, that's hard to do. It's hard to be patient, but it can be easy. It can, we can easily give, like put a value judgment on ourselves and saying, I'm not good enough because I don't know how to do that. But for me, part of my goal process is saying, Hey, I have the capacity to learn. This doesn't mean anything about me that I don't have the skills right now to accomplish this goal, but I can learn them and I can advocate for myself in yeah. in getting that that information um because sometimes it can be really easy to want someone to give it to us you know to say like i need someone to i'm trying to think of an example but yeah like i need someone to tell me how to run the business but instead i can say i can figure this out i just need some help and i can advocate for myself and i can ask for that help um, or I can like find out that information myself. So for me, that's a, that's a, another important part of the process that's helped me because, because it's taken a lot of like the getting, feeling personal about it. It's, it's not a deficiency on my part that I don't know how to do something. And right. I have the ability to learn it, you know? Yeah. Cause you're not an encyclopedia. You're a human being, you know, I experienced that right. so much with my job. Like, <sighs> probably a little too much you know what I'm saying but like I like there's things that I don't know so I have to call people up or ask someone in the next county over another agent how do you do this or call someone from the department of um ag economics or whatever and see say how do you run your farmer's market or what are some tips or pot like you said so yeah no I think it's it's really important to one of my favorite lines at work is, I don't know, but I'll find out, you know? So it's just like being okay with not knowing. Cause I think a lot of people would rather you, uh, openly say that you don't know and, and I really work to get that information than to BS them and to just act. I used to be so bad about that. Like I will own that. I felt paralyzed 
by not knowing the answer or not knowing the right thing to say. So I used, I, I, I mean, it's not like I have, I don't anymore, but I, I used to teach a lot of workshops and in the beginning, you know, when someone would ask me a question that I wouldn't know, I would totally BS and I would like talk around in circles and all that. And then like, obviously they didn't feel good about it. I didn't feel good about it. And and it was just came from an insecurity place. And so wow. now I'm much more comfortable saying, I don't know, but I'll find out, you know, or yeah. I don't know, you can find out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sadly, with my job, that's never the answer, but I love right. that line. And that sounds <laughs> so beautiful to me. Like, it sounds like magic to my ears. <laughs> and I, I'm not good at it by any means, you know, but I'm working on it because there are that kind of personal accountability, I think, yeah, I think is a huge p- piece of it. And and when people feel empowered to say like, I can learn whatever I need to learn to make this happen, yeah. that that's a huge, that's really yeah. huge. So, um, so yeah, once once that piece is in place, and you're saying like, okay, I know the internal work that I need to do to kind of level up to to feel like I could move forward on this goal and then the practical skills, like working on the practical skills and the practical knowledge to be able to move this goal forward. Um, Then a lot of times it's planning and it's just saying, I'm going to create space in my schedule for working on this. And so for me, it was, you know, in, in the example that I gave in my Instagram story, it was scheduling a time to meet with the business folks. I think it was once a week. I can't remember, but, um, yeah, it can be so easy to set a goal and have all this, but then not actually make the space in our schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's something, I mean, I still struggle with it because it's so easy to say, I want to do this and I'm totally going to do this, but it's, Mm. it's easy to think about Mm. how we're going to have time in the future. But unless we like put it into our calendar, yeah, it doesn't magically appear. Yeah. That was like, younger me all the way like I'm still obviously young but I mean just the younger version of myself I was so bad about that like oh I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and I had really great ideas and they were things I was pretty decent at but I never was my my follow-through game was so weak you know like Mm -hmm. like it just sounded great I think sometimes that's an issue that people who are more imaginative or creative have Mm -hmm. is that all these ideas sound really great but the mm-hmm. fun parts sound great, not the nitty gritty of having right. to Google this and that and watch tutorial videos and, and read articles on why you can't upload something this way or that way or, you know, like whatever the right. obstacle is, the boring stuff that you don't want to do. Right. Like, oh, yeah, I'm really great at, I don't know, like maybe ripping up jeans and acid washing them and making them look super cool and painting them. But, geez, having to make an account and sell them and set up a PayPal and all this other stuff and consistently sit down and work when I'm uninspired, you know, that's the stuff that can get kind of difficult, you know, and market yourself. No, oh, market <laughs> that's yourself. The hardest part. That's the Seriously hardest part. though. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Really? I mean, I feel like that could probably be part of the goals thing too. It's like, it's so hard to, to market ourselves. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So there's that. And then, and then I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to remember what I had written before, but I think it's, it's good also to give ourselves space and recognize that we're going to get discouraged yeah. and normalize that. Because like you said, I think this segues perfectly because there is the nitty gritty. There's the stuff that's not fun that we're not good at and we can outsource as much as we can. And we can move towards that, you know, like in the business, I'm, um, I really actually don't like emails. I can't stand emails. (laughs) I do that. I I need to. And I'm like, I was trying to think like, I don't see there's any point in anytime soon that I'm going to be able to outsource that. But you know, there's certain things that you just like can't stand, but you, yeah, you have to. And I think putting a lot of space around that and a lot of understanding and compassion can, even if it makes you like work towards the goals a little bit slower, it'll keep you moving forward and understanding and recognizing that that's going to happen is really important too for me. In my experience, it's helped a lot because there's times when I get discouraged. There's times mm-hmm. when I just want to cry and want to quit and want to, you know, just say like, this is too hard. And mm-hmm. I think 
if we can expect that to happen and resource ourselves and and know that that's a normal part of the process, then we have a better chance of getting through that. And in any size goal, whether it's like a 10 year goal or, you know, a goal today, like I just want, I mean, I, honestly, you know, tomorrow actually I'm going into U Garden and we have these, this online store up where we're doing in-person pickup. So kind of the stuff, the product that we had after the market, we still want to try to sell some of it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm thinking about emails I want to write and people I want to reach out to, to say, Hey, here's our online store. If you want to shop. And that is so hard for me because it like, it's very energetically draining and I don't like emails. And also it's like uncomfortable because I'm promoting myself and I'm mm. asking something from someone, which is like, yeah, you know, look at this, maybe buy from us, you know, this kind yeah. of thing. And so, so it's very energetically expensive. And a lot of times what I'll do is like work on other things at you garden, but today going, coming home from work, I was like, what if I Kate, what if I go to you garden tomorrow? And I'm just like, what if I pretended that I was confident in doing this and just like did it, you know? And so if I can, I'm going to, you know, make the game plan tonight and say, here's the people that I'm going to reach out to. So I know exactly what I'm going to be starting with tomorrow instead of trying to figure it out in the morning. But all that to say, I have a goal for tomorrow morning. It's not like, you know, I'm kind of talking in this big picture of like these five year goals that I have, but even tomorrow, it's a big goal. That's really scary. And recognizing that maybe after I send my first email, I'm going to say, I want to quit <laughs> because this is just really difficult for me, but I'm going to keep going, you know, yeah. um, because I recognize that that's, that that's a normal part of the process. And if I can push through that, then, and the other side of it, hope, you know, hopefully, I mean, we'll see giving also grace for if I decide not to do that, <laughs> yeah. don't, you know, don't get my whole list done. But on the other side of it, I'm going to feel really proud of myself because I'm going to say, Hey, I believed in myself. I put myself out there. I'm learning how to be confident and all of that. I have more resources now for the next thing that I want to accomplish because I'm proving to myself that I can trust myself. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think, and then, and then the last thing I'll say kind of going, kind of just building off of that, the more, the more we can trust ourselves, the, the bigger we can dream, I guess. And not, I think it's also important to not define bigger as like more, 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 but the bigger we can dream is maybe just like having more trust and more faith in ourselves that when we envision something that we can bring it to reality, because you know, what my goals are is going to be very different than yours versus someone else's. And so it's not like what the world defines as successful, but us bringing into reality, kind of creating something new that isn't in the world yet, whatever that looks like. And so, yeah, for me, I guess that's kind of the end of the, the, the end of kind of the, the process that I go through for achieving big and small goals. Yeah, no, I love, I love that. And also one thing you mentioned about, um, normalizing the fact that sometimes you're going to be afraid or the fact that you're going to be uncertain of yourself. One thing that made me think of uh, was sometimes I like to watch, apparently I watch a lot of YouTube. I don't know. I use it in a good way, but I, I've, I've seen videos of people who talk about their success and how they got there and their mentality and what they do on a daily basis. And I've heard this from a few different people but I think it really struck me when I listened to this one guy talk can't remember his name anymore he's lost in the oblivion of the YouTube shuffle and the algorithm but um he he had said something like you know and am I motivated every day no I'm really not most days I'm not I don't want to sit down and do the work I don't want to yeah. do this or that and and I think Joe, Joe Rogan said that too like a lot of times he doesn't want to work out or, or do a podcast or whatever and I think that just kind of really struck a chord in me and made me feel better and helped me because I would kind of think, oh, because I'm not motivated, there's something wrong with me or because I'm not motivated, 
like I'm just lazy or, or maybe I'm like, I don't know, am I a nutrient deficient right now? Am I depressed? Like, why is it just right where like, it's easier for me just to want to lay down in bed and cuddle my dog and like, Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. do that. And like the bed's calling to me when I'm trying to sit down and edit or I'm trying to, you know, send out cold calls to different therapists and specialists. Like, and I would think, okay, then I must be, there's something wrong with me. You know, I'm depressed or something or who knows, maybe, maybe I am a little depressed and don't know it, but (laughs) you know what I'm saying though? Like, I just always thought I am behind or broken because of this or, Mm. or this isn't the norm, basically, I guess this isn't the norm. This is the abnormal, but listening to really successful people who I can be very successful, very knowledgeable, uh, mode, what I had always thought was like motivated but they are motivated people he, to hear them say most days I don't want to that was so like a relief to hear you know it went yeah. from me kind of being in my own little orbit somewhere to to me being like oh hey like we're all orbiting together right now and we're all in this orbit of lackadaisicalness and maybe this has something to do with our genetic wiring and predisposition to find the easiest route and to seek comfort right. and shelter and yes you know so 100%. maybe maybe this is just my own human instincts just kind of um kicking me in the butt right now and working against <laughs> me inadvertently you know so yeah it's just stuff like that I guess understanding that maybe you think oh I'm the only one who ever feels like I doubt myself or like I'm an imposter having imposter syndrome and not feeling it I just want to take a nap (laughs) which by the way I have been on the nap train lately just letting myself take a nap if I need to and it's beautiful but um yeah the world of napping who would have thought it'd be so (laughs) enchanting (laughs) I love that enchanting naps yes more of that for everybody (laughs) please fiesta or siesta I almost said fiesta that's the opposite of a siesta (laughs) siesta's for everyone (laughs) yeah yeah and I you know I guess just to tack on to that, I mean, I feel so insecure and so scared a lot of times, you know, and I, you know, I'm definitely not like a Joe Rogan or anything, but I've, you know, achieved some success, quote unquote, in like the ways of the world. And um, I mean, this year more than anything, I just feel like such an imposter sometimes. And Mm -hmm. like, if someone gives me a compliment, it's like, I don't deserve that. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And it's just, I, I think, I I don't know. I wonder, I think to a certain degree, there's always going to be some of that there because if we're always growing, there's always going to be new levels that we've not experienced before and new Mm -hmm. challenges, new fears. It's going to bring up new stuff. And, and so I think for me, what's, helping a lot is being able, I guess, like expecting that and feeling more, I don't know if this is the right word, if resource is the right word, but basically feeling more comfortable with discomfort. Yes. I literally had a guy on, um, I shouldn't say a guy, I had a, a specialist on was it Monday? Yeah, it was Monday. And Dr. Reed Wilson, that's a really, really good episode um, for anyone mm-hmm. who would like to check that out. But he was talking about how he's big on seeking that discomfort, mm-hmm. not only just saying, okay, I'm going to put up with it, but looking for it, you know, mm-hmm. confronting it, feeling it, normalizing it, um, and kind of getting used to it in a sense and taking that power away from it or maybe you know oh I'm nervous in big groups then daggummit I'm going to this big group tomorrow and I'm gonna I don't care if I stutter every time I open my mouth or I awkwardly you know lose track of what I'm saying three five ten times I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna walk away that day saying I didn't let fear become that boundary for me you know Fears, the boundaries that you kind of set for yourself. And that's a quote that I really like (laughs) that helps me out. Like sometimes I'll be like, oh, I don't want to do this thing. I'm afraid or nervous of it. And I'm like, so I'm going to let myself have this boundary and tell myself no, even though I want to do it because there's a, because there's a sensation in me that says don't, 
Right. That doesn't make sense. I want to do it. If I want to do it, I want to freaking do it, man. I'm going to do it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and it's so funny. You saying that makes me think of too, if I've also, and I guess just on the flip side, um, I am trying to be more comfortable with discomfort, but also I'm trying to be more comfortable with Hmm. knowing when to be discomforted and when to just let yourself have a moment of rest and grace and yes that it's like I, it's also okay to be happy mm. I think sometimes it's and I don't know if that's the right language but um I think sometimes I feel like I always need to be nose to the grindstone working hard kind of I don't know if it's part of like a martyr complex or I need to like be suffering to, to feel good about myself or something. Oh, right. Like you feel like if you're relaxed and content and happy and just chilling, like, well, you equate the strain and the struggle of working hard to value and you equate that to I'm producing. And so your mind is so maybe you're saying your mind is so set on, that strain and that struggle of production being the only thing you really equate to value and, and positive, something positive. So when you're not feeling that strain of working towards something or working your butt off, then you feel like you're not doing anything. And therefore that feeling of not doing anything is anti, it's like bad, something like that. Yeah. I mean, that was such a beautiful reflection. I mean, even just as an example, like even in therapy, if I don't feel like we went really deep, I'm like, <laughs> you know like that wasn't like as productive as it could have been and so I think also if there's people listening that are like me it's also good to just enjoy what you've what you've accomplished and I guess that goes back to celebrating but like if it's easy that doesn't mean you're on the wrong path either Mm. um and so I guess I want to you know kind of the yin and yang like bring in the other side where it doesn't always have to feel uncomfortable and hard and like you're afraid, but you're just going to tackle it anyway. I think there's also a lot of growth and possibility in being kind of in your zone of genius and like producing something amazing, or I guess, I mean, we're going back to producing, but just like (laughs) having it feel easy, you know? Um, And I I don't know what that looks like yet, but I'm working towards it. (laughs) I feel you. I feel like a lot of people are always constantly trying to find that, that balance for themselves you know, but, um, I'm getting more and more tired and the more sleepy I get, the less I, for, the more I forget what I was going to say. I had something <laughs> good. Ugh. I don't know if it comes back to me, it comes back to me. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, I mean, um, it might be good to start wrapping it up. So I know, I think so too. This is the longest episode I've ever done. This was like basically a two hour episode. <laughs> We'll see. I was gonna say, um, you're welcome to edit out any part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm wondering if maybe <clears throat> maybe I should do like a part one, part two. Mm. Like, you know, I forget. I'm gonna have to Google it. There's recommendations. Like sometimes I think someone said don't ever do part one, part two, because people will feel like they didn't get all they wanted to get from the episode, but that sounds kind of dumb to me. Like mm not dumb I shouldn't say that so harsh but like I don't know like we talked about a lot of different topics it's in it's in a sense the the topics we went over was kind of like two whole different episodes and it's my podcast gosh darn it <laughs> if I want to do that I'm gonna do it yeah <laughs> the two part episodes all the time I'm the mayor of this town okay <laughs> uh, so uh what are some places people could find could go to to get plugged in with you and your work Really, the best place is Instagram. I know we basically spent the whole first hour of this talking about Instagram. Um, that's where I'm most consistent. Okay. So Instagram. I, and what was your Instagram again? It's I am Noelle Joy. And Noelle Joy is N-O-E-L-L-E-J-O-Y. That's such a nice your name. name. <laughs> yeah, I know. Very festive. Just in time for December. I just exactly. dated this episode because this probably isn't going to launch until... Mm, maybe two three months from now the problem is i've done such a great job of stockpiling podcast episodes that now i almost need to just stop recording after tomorrow's episode because i have like so many i think now (laughs) i'm gonna have like maybe 
12 or 13 episodes and I only upload once a week <laughs> and That's I st- it's interesting but anyways thank you for coming on this was so You're great so welcome thank you so much for your consistency and reaching out to me I really appreciate yes. it <laughs> No, that's totally fine. Like, I know you are a very productive and busy human being. So, like, I had no problem. Plus, I really wanted you on the show. And and there's a few people, like, it's just the habit you get into with this. You know, you just have to keep reaching out to people because a lot yeah. of the people who come on the show are just super productive and they're just writing books and, and getting their doctorates and um, getting presentations and TED Talks and running different, you know, uh, different companies. So, it's just, like. That's awesome. You know, I just, I'm okay with that. And uh, I'm just like, take however long you need. I'm just going to be here sending my little reminder emails every so often. (laughs) I mean, that's amazing. Like the skills that you're building too, of just like putting yourself out there and, and not taking it personally if someone doesn't, you know, but you're just saying like, I'm just going to keep doing this because I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a huge skill set. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I definitely get a lot of no's, but it's always exciting when I get yeses and I'm like, wow, if I'm getting yeses right now with no following, (laughs) 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 imagine what will happen if I, you know, when I do start to catch, um, catch fire a little bit, hopefully, I mean, you know, and I see that that goes back to feeling weird about being like, oh, I want this to do well. Like, I feel like I can't say that. I feel like I can't mm-hmm. say I want people, I want to have listeners because I, I do. I'm not doing all this work for nothing. And right. I want this to help people. I want people to hear this and be helped by it and, yeah. and help, help and have this like build them up and kind of be, I don't know, like a friend almost or a comfort to them or something positive. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I do want people to hear this. I am doing this. The whole reason I felt inspired and led by God to do this was because I felt like I wanted to take take from the experiences that I've had and and maybe pour into someone else a little bit and help someone else who is struggling with things I've struggled with that was a whole point of this so yeah I want people to hear it like yes <laughs> I, was say, I mean if you want someone to just validate you owning it right now like you can just say I I want this to be successful I want to reach more people and I want I want people to know about this podcast yeah, exactly. I'm like, look, I don't want any of the clout. Partly, again, partly why I'm being anonymous for now. And like we said, if mm-hmm. I choose to one day not be anonymous, that's that's fine too. But like, mm-hmm. this is literally just like, I just want to help people. I just want someone to listen to this. And it's kind of crazy to see how much it's unfolded because at first it was so hard for me to even start this project just because, again, yeah. the perfectionist and the the yeah. thought of like, I would get this thought a lot, like, who do you think you are to do a podcast? Why do you think you're yeah. doing this? You know, yeah. like, this is crazy. I would get that thought. This is crazy talk. Like, you can't do this. Yeah. This is so, un, un, like, this is weird. Like, why would you even think this is something to do? You're just wasting your time. It's a waste of time to do this. You know, I would get yeah. all sorts of thoughts like that. So, made time total tell. sense. I was going to say, I've had all those thoughts, too, about other, you know, other things. But it's like, we're so conditioned to keep ourselves small, to keep the people Mm. around us comfortable. And when we're breaking out of that, it's like uncomfortable for everybody because it's like she's, I mean, you're being audacious and that's like the the best thing ever, you know, because you're, you have this gift and this message that you want to share with people and you're doing it. So thank you. Yeah. I always say like before the podcast, I'm like, you know, like God just help me to say the things that I need to say and to remember at the end of the day, this is like a ministry and this is just really just an act of servitude, I guess, you know, and, and then I mean that in a positive sense of servitude, yeah. you know, just yeah. trying to be a resource or to help someone else in a sense, like you said about pouring into yourself so you can pour out to others. Yeah. So yeah. Which that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? What it's all about. That's why we're here. We're we're connected inextricably with our community, you know? So mm-hmm. um, yeah. Well, I'll let you get on to bed. If you're anything like me, <laughs> you're super tired. <laughs> and ready yeah, for a I'm nice shower. Um, yes. But it's been such a lovely conversation. So yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel like I've known you longer than I've known you. I, mean, yes. I don't know if that's like a weird thing to say, but like. Well, it's so funny because this is like the second conversation we've had, but it's, yeah. uh, I mean, it felt so easy. And so, yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's flowed really well. So I agree. And those are like the best, honestly. And if I do put this in the podcast, I'll say that we met at a fruit and vegetable convention in Savannah, Georgia. And (laughs) (laughs) Noelle was presenting um, on herbs and teas and uh, production. And I was like, that's so cool. And and it just blossomed from there. <laughs> blossomed from there. Yeah. I, um, I'm really excited to, li- to start listening to your podcast. <laughs> but anyways, thank you. I hope you find it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And um, whoop, who knows? Maybe we'll do another episode together sometime. <laughs> All right. Let me know. I, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if anyone listens to this. Two <laughs> hours. <laughs> And um, if you are one of the ones who listened to this, thank you. Um, That wraps up Rabbit Trails Part 2. And as always, if you have any topics of interest that you would like me to discuss on the show or uh, find someone to get on the show who knows a lot more about than I do, let me know. Email me at mindfulnesswithchrist at gmail.com. And I'm on Spotify, I'm on Apple Podcasts, I am on other things that I will have in the link below if you go through the website link that I have. Anyways, yeah, so I hope you are feeling inspired to reach your goals. And I guess uh, my imparting words would be, um, it's really scary sometimes to think about going after the things in life that you truly want or maybe you think that's not for me that's for other people other people are artists other people are writers other people are uh, businessmen successful businessmen and women (laughs) but the truth is um, a lot of times the things we want the most and the best things in life are scary but it's worth it you know and it's doable and A lot of times we think other people around us aren't afraid, but they are. I think we all have our insecurities and our fears that we struggle with and we walk around thinking everyone else around us doesn't deal with the same things that we deal with. But a lot of that goes unspoken, so we just don't, we don't see it. But anyways, um, please, if you're listening, don't let fear stop you from going after what it is that you want to do. And don't let self-doubt get in the way. It's easier said than done and it's a process. But I pray and hope that you can utilize some of the steps in this podcast episode to work towards your goal because you can do it. And I am rooting for you.